الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ومولانا محمد المصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم بمددكم مدركم سيدي رسول الكريم مدد يا سيدي يا سلطان الأولياء الشيخ عبد الفايز الداغستاني سلطان الأولياء الشيخ محمد نازم عاد الحقاني مولانا الشيخ هشام كرباني الشيخ عدنان كرباني الشيخ محمد عاد عبد الخالق الخجدواني صاحب زمان سيد محمد المهدي عليه السلام روح الله سيدنا عيسى عليه السلام سيف الله سيدنا عليه السلام ثم سيد باقي الصديق سيدنا عمر سيدنا عثمان إمام الحسن عليه السلام إمام الحسين عليه السلام وسيداتنا فاطمة عليه السلام وإمام جعفر الصادق عليه السلام بمدركم إن ذلكم وسيروا صدقتنا وصدقين الفاتحة Ameen. And always a reminder for myself and Abdul Qalaji so da'if of miskeen of zal of jahad and by grace of Allah that we are still in existence. And alhamdulillah that Allah in the blessed month of Shawwal and the, the month in which Allah brings the souls into the Divinely oceans and Divinely kingdom and the soul at a state of nothingness that been washed and dressed with all its blessings and the nafs brought down by the power of Ramadan. And the vastness of this ocean of rahmah and mercy, we pray that Allah dress us with all its bounty and all its blessings and that the more we become nothing, the more we can be present in the presence of the One. And I mentioned before those whom are very present in the dunya, they look to the Divine and they see nothing. And they say, there is no Divine, there is nothing to work for, everything is about here. And all there exists is here because too much of that one and it became uh, an eye and what they call ananiya, the eyeness. And the sickness of eyeness is the sickness of Pharaoh. And when somebody has that sickness, you can hear it. This is like a med school, more powerful than med school because this is the soul school that they hear it. They hear when somebody is talking, it's all I, I did this, I am that, I is this, I, 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 because their oneness of themselves became so strong, their one became an I. And all they see of this world is themselves and, and they're, they're into themselves. And Allah describes in Holy Qur'an, have you seen those who make their desires their Lord? It became a rub for them, it became their, their own desire and want and need <coughs> became a Lord for them, their nafs became their God for them and they bowed down to it. And this immensity of Ramadan to annihilate the nafs and exonerate the soul and lift and honour the soul and, and free it from the oppression of the nafs. And then the immensity of the month of Shawwal, its blessings and the vastness that Allah throws the soul into that ocean of vastness in which it no longer understands any coordinates. It doesn't know what's in front of it, what's behind it, what's to the right of it, what's to the left of it and a danger of feeling hopeless and lonely where one has to cherish their solitude and not focus on loneliness. They're not understanding the reality that Allah opening for them. In this ocean of vastness the training is, is to the solace in your being by yourself, being content with yourself, being and, and having the energy and the reality of yourself, how to meditate, how to contemplate, how to pass the time, how to be in a state of, 
of ease and pleasure with yourself that you're not in need of others to verify you, to validate you, to, to give you entertainment. Everything in this dunya is about somebody else validating, valid, validating ourselves. And if we don't have that, we, we don't have something. And this solitude that Allah encourages through these practices of tafakkur, we said that this was eight months of building up. This is not a, you tune in now and this is it. These are from the people who have been tuning in for the eight months, nine months, now tenth month is that we're on a journey. And this journey with tafakkur, with contemplation, with meditation, all the self-realization of myself, how to connect, how to bring my bad character down, how to bring the madad and the support of the heaven, how to be in the company of those whom are supported by the heavens so that I can reach to this understanding. And I trained on how to be with myself, how to listen to the salawats, how to make my zikr, make my connection and then I realized I'm really not with myself. I'm in a far greater companionship and association with all of this madad, all the support, all these lights and all these blessings. Then we begin to understand and at some level then shawal understands and opens its immense understanding that not to feel that oh everything went, the energies of Ramadan went, now I didn't feel anything and people to be very down and, and uh, lethargic during the month of shawal. But the immensity of this ocean that Allah has opened, that this, this peace and solitude that Allah has given is the time of reflection, the time of energy, the time of meditation, the time of contemplation and to find oneself in the presence of their Lord and how to achieve that energy and, and achieve that state of peace and, and purpose on what is a, and what is our purpose in this existence. And the busyness of other people and things all around can sometimes distract us from that understanding. That what is it that Allah wants from me? What is it that Prophet wants from me? And that how am I to achieve that and how am I to do all the things that are necessary for that existence? Is the work that I have and the actions that I'm doing, does it support my understanding for dunya hasanat wa akhirah hasanat wa fin adhaba nar? Is that I was supposed to have the goodness of this life that was an opportunity to build my hereafter, not their separate entities. That I'll do good in this life and pray Allah give me something good in the hereafter, but I was going to use this life to build my palace in Akhirah. That Ya Rabbi the sustenance you give to me to build my palace in Akhirah, the ability, my breath, my life, my movement, everything should be in a means in which to build the reality of my Akhirah. And then they come and describe the reality of that Akhirah is the closeness, proximity and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad For any servant to achieve that then has been greatest, been given the greatest gift of Allah is the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and the proximity to that reality by the good deeds and good actions inshaAllah. We pray that Allah dress us and, and bless us with these realities and to, to love the Holy Family. And by an act of love and putting it within our heart just an intention then we have to know that our soul sits in their association in the heavenly malakut, in the world of light. That when we hear that it's the Ursa Mubarak of Imam Jafar as Sadiq, these are immense souls alayhi salam, immense blessings that, Ya Rabbi let me to sit in their presence, let me to be dressed by their reality, that not me myself was any good, not my actions were any good, but I'm just through the intention of love and that you reward love without any, any, any type of judgment. If you're coming and saying, I want to be in their presence because I pray a lot, Allah oh let's hold that off. I want to come in their presence because I fast a lot, uh, again let, let's judge then your fasting and your action. So all these actions that people think would maybe deem them to be in their presence, awliya come and teach, don't use that because that actually will stop you from entering into that reality. 
The only thing you have to ask Ya Rabbi is negate every action, I have no action that you're going to be pleased with, I know all my hidden nifaq and hypocrisy within myself, I'm only coming to this door through your Divine love, love for your Divine Presence, love for the love of Sayyidina Muhammad love for his holy companions, love for his holy family, only through that love please grant me a seat in their presence. And that's a, a, an intention that cannot be judged, Allah will not judge love. Allah grants the Divinely oceans of muhabbat and love for the sake of love, go sit, go sit and put your soul in their presence and let them to dress you from that bounty of what Allah has given to them. So this way is not the way of thinking where somebody will write something from fiqr and say, this is this, this is this and this is this. They've, their brain already made them lose everything. They lost every opportunity and they trusted in a piece of meat that locked in a closet and hasn't even seen daylight versus they didn't trust in their heart. وَقَابِلْ مُؤْمِنْ بَيْتُ اللَّهِ And Allah said, I'm not in heaven, not on earth but I'm on your heart, I'm not in your head. Shaitan is in your head, your nafs is in your head and none of them have seen the daylight. So means this is the way of, of the God, the way of muhabbat, immense blessings, they can't even be described. Other people think you be crazy if you tell them that just with an act of love, an intention of love that I'm coming for this love Ya Rabbi let my soul to sit with Imam Jafar as Sadiq in this holy weekend and to be dressed by it, to be blessed by it. That whatever difficulty and wrong with his holy nazar clean it and wash it. Like a blessed grandchildren that come to visit, imagine your grandchildren come to visit you and have everything on earth that you can give to them. There's not one thing you would withhold from them because you're a person of love and you're from the souls of love. These are the big souls of muhabbat and they don't look to creation to judge it. They don't look to creation to, to, to qualify it, they know that what they received was unprecedented rewards from the Divinely Presence, not from any action but because Allah wrote it as a qismat. So these are the, these are the grandfathers of the tariqah, these are the grandfathers of our reality, these are the, uh, we are the inheritors of this turuq. And this way that they have inspired to us, come sit in our family tree. If you're listening to this broadcast, have listened to this broadcast, will listen to this broadcast, you are in the Naqshbandiyatul Aliyah family. You are under the intercession of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq, you are under the intercession of Imam Jafar as Sadiq as Salaam, you are under the inter intercession of all mashaykh of the shajara and the golden chain of Naqshbandiyatul Aliyah, Most High Sayyidina Muhammad all the way to Sultan al Awliya, Imam Shaykh Abdul Faiz al Daghestani, Sultan al Awliya, Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani, Mawlana Shaykh Muhammad Adil, Mawlana Shaykh Isham Kabani, Shaykh Adnan Kabani, and all the blessed shajara and chain and shaykhs of Naqshbandiyatul Aliyah, Mawlana Sayyidina Abbas Qidr salam. Imagine all these blessed souls. And you don't have to pray a lot to be with them, you don't have to fast a lot to be with them, you just have to have a heart that is filled with love. And say, Ya Rabbi only by the intention of love and muhabbat please let my soul to be with them on these holy nights. When the shaykh tells me that these are holy nights coming up, Ya let me let my soul to be with them, that, let, that just g give a good deed that I'll do just to sit with them and they dress me with their blessing. Imagine now your soul goes and sit in, a, in the presence of a soul that more powerful than our sun and our solar system. So then you can Google the sun and the, the greatness and the vastness of the sun and look at the immensity of the sun within our solar system and the earth is less than a dot. And the earth with 7 billion inhabitants is less than a speck, less than a speck in the presence of that sun. Do you think that you're anything in the presence of that reality? We're speck on the earth in the presence of that sun. Because Allah said, I show you my signs, 
within yourself and on the horizon. Awliyaullah come into our life and point out, look if Allah makes the souls in eternal and these holy souls are more powerful than these suns and this is the smallest sun, the one in our galaxy. Look at the immensity of the power of that sun and we are just these little tiny inhabitants on earth that are complete epsilons, means they're non-existent. Do you think your sins have any, any presence in their presence? That your bad actions have any presence in their presence or just enough for Allah to grant your reality to be sitting with them, to be dressed with them, to be blessed with them. That we came through the door of love and muhabbat is my only intention, dress me and bless me, perfect me. That what you see wrong in me, correct me and pray for me and send me back to the presence of Allah pure and purified, washed and dressed with all of your gifts. So that Allah will look to my soul, look to my reality and be pleased that you, you cared for the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad So, so many intense and immense realities and the immensity of these souls that something can't even be understood. There are souls one billion times greater in size and power than the sun and the sun of this galaxy. Is there are suns and bigger suns and bigger suns and these were all for us to understand that your souls are not all the same. What Allah give to some souls, there are souls for entire universes and galaxies. So immensity of light, the immensity of the reality of light and we pray that Allah always keep us with the holy ones, the blessed ones, the purified ones and that they are eager to surround themselves with those whom have gone astray and whom have angered Allah they want to be of service. They're not only the ones who want to be with pure ones because they're pure themselves. They want to be of service to the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad And they seek out and ask, Ya Rabbi those whom you've angered, Ya Rabbi let us to dress them and bless them. Those whom went astray and lost their way, Ya Rabbi let us to dress them and bless them. So that all of them return back onto the light and back into your heavenly kingdom with their honour, with their light and with their beauty. So that Sayyidina Muhammad to be happy and that Allah most high to be happy. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifun wa salaman al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.